Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Remember, this is a channel where we talk all about how you don't need to be a CEO in order to have some impact on the world. And thanks for joining me for another episode. This episode, we're going to continue on our new challenge. If you don't know what that challenge is yet, let me tell you all about it. So basically, we just finished talking about TensorFlow, getting a TensorFlow certification. Before that, we were talking about getting um, just learning data science for the first time. So we did data science boot camp. And earlier before that, we learned how um, how I learned Python and we went and tried to learn Python in three uh, months. In between that, I also tried to go through the book um, Intro to Statistical Learning. And so going through those things, um, going through those challenges, you know, you get one, one step closer to, you know, finally having the ability to make some great impact on the world and that's what this channel is all about you don't need to be a ceo in order to have some impact on the world you just need to be great at what you do and that's what we're trying to do here um now this is an end of one project but i hope to open this up to more people to join my challenges in the future so with all that introduction let's get started on the usual which is kind of what i did this week and just anything I learned and let's talk about that. So let me get my iPad and we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I got my iPad with me and open, I have my website. This is my website and I host it on Notion. And here I'm, I'm showing you guys this so you guys know where all my notes are. I want everyone to know where my notes are and where all the links and everything is. In the description, you have a link to my website but also links to whatever courses I'm taking. I'll also have them here. So here, the first one, I have getting TensorFlow certified right under my picture. And under that, I have the one that I'm currently going through right now. It's not a page, it's a link, but I'll work on getting that to be a button you can click later on. So here we go, we have what the course is about. Well, I haven't really answered that yet because I'm still doing, going through the course I just started, but it's basically about algorithms and the uh, you know, 50 or 40 or so most commonly used algorithms in computer science and learning about them, learning how to bug, debug, learning how to, you know, work the command line, just getting really good at some software engineering and thinking about algorithms. So here we go, here I have my log. I always have a log for you guys, so you guys know what's going on and where I am. Um, so you guys can see, if you guys are late, you guys can see how I went through this. So be, usually I try to do a week in a week, and sometimes I manage to do two weeks in one week. But here, as you can see, it took me one entire week to do week one. It took me two days of the week. And here I have some notes for the week, so let's go over that and see what I learned. So this week was all about stress testing. I mean, it was an intro, obviously, since this course just started. This course is six weeks. Um, so I'm sure that I'm going to learn like three or four algorithms each, each week. But for right now, all we did was we learned about using the command line and submitting new, um, our assignments and our, our, our problems and our algorithms. We also learned about stress testing, which is really, really interesting because I actually never went through this process ever. I knew about debugging and I've debugged before. Um, a quick little joke for you is how do you debug in Python? Um, or what's the best debugger in Python? And the answer is the print, just print. Um, but regardless, through here, we're trying to basically improve and stress test our algorithm. And in order to do that, we write basically a another program which goes ahead and just inputs rapidly a bunch of different uh, numbers in our algorithm and runs our main Python file. And whenever there is a discrepancy in what the answer should be, it will let us know and then we can use that to find out hey how was this wrong why was this wrong and then move on and i'm going to talk more about that later if that's a little bit confusing but here we learned about stress testing two different algorithms so by two different algorithms what i mean by that is one is the algorithm you're trying to improve on and the other one is kind of a very simple and naive algorithm you want your algorithm to be better than the naive algorithm and then you want to kind of flip-flop between them you want you want algorithm to be end up being very very efficient sometimes you get the right answer with an algorithm and it's not it's either not always right or it's just very inefficient and so if you have a very inefficient algorithm let's call them the naive one and then the other one the main one you want to stress test it the main one the one that you're trying to make more efficient 
with the naive one. Now, it happens to be that sometimes algorithms can be right um, different time, like at different times. So they could an algorithm can get something wrong, like the naive one can get something wrong when the main one got right, and the the main one can get something right when the naive got wrong. And so those are you know kind of things you got to test as you go. But mainly what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find an alternative solution to your algorithm, while also making sure that you stress test it and there isn't any mistakes. So that's what we learned about. Um, we also learned about how to submit, like I mentioned before, to the grader and how the grader is going to tell you, hey, you took up too much memory, you took up too much time, you know, and your answer is wrong in these cases. So our algorithm for this week, right, was a maximum pairwise product. What that means is you got a list of possible, I'm sorry, you got a list of numbers and you got to find out if you multiply the two biggest numbers in that list what's the answer it's very very easy as as you would expect as in an intro you know intro week but it's actually very interesting because the whole process of stress testing and you know running multiple pro programs in the command line was while not completely well the stress testing was new to me but while not completely you know foreign to me using the command line it was actually very tough and I ran into a couple of issues that I managed to fix and learn along the way. So the first thing we did was creating a test for the maximum pairwise. And so we did this by, you know, allowing our command line to take in a um, an argument. And we did that by systems.arg1. And then we printed that and then we did the... the um, we did a list comprehension where we would get all the numbers created by that in a certain range. So let's say I put um, into the command line an n of 10, it will then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, and actually here it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 9, and then it would put them together. Now what this is basically creating is a list of numbers to test. Now, how do you put this into another program? Well, I learned all about that. But in this case, what we were doing with this code was actually getting the output and putting it into a text file. So that's what we did with that one. And the second one, we did it a little bit differently. We also did it to a text file to, to kind of test it. But then we, we use this code actually to then input it into our naive and our uh, main algorithms and then you know the out they get the output and kind of compare the two and see which one is right and which one's wrong right and so in this one we took a c to make sure we always get the same random numbers and we did the same thing but for like a larger range now i didn't include it here but the way you you do this is you write python 3 then you write the uh the name of this file so this one out let's call it algorithm 2 dot pi and then you do space the number that you want for the seed, space the number you want, actually, yeah, space the number you want for the, the n, the other way around, the number you want for the n, so 10 and then the seed, let's say five. And then you do space, and then you do a greater, le, greater than, um, and then you do space again, and you do your text file, so like inputs.text. And when you do that, you'll end up with a new file called inputs.txt, and that's where all your your answers will be, um, or your output will be, which is awesome. I, I didn't know how to do that, and I do, which is great. But again, that's not really what we wanted. We didn't just want it to go to a text file. We want it to go straight into the program. And so that's kind of what we did in the main script. So here we have how many tests we want to run, then we print the amount of tests, and then we use the gen.py file to create, like I mentioned before, that's the other algorithm, to create the different um, numbers, and then it goes straight into, in, into the input text, and then we read that input text into our model. Now, the model is the naive, and the main is the, uh, the, the main algorithm that we're testing. So here, I named the model, so I did python3 model.py is less than input.txt because we're putting in the input.txt into that and then out whatever the output 
we're getting from that, we're putting into model.txt. And that's the ultimate solution, right? It's really cool how, how you can use that, how you can do that. And that's using os.system. Because that, what that basically does is that it runs that, it, prints, it puts that line into the command line. And then we open the model, and then we open the main, and we see, hey, are the last two lines in that the same? And if they aren't, we break. So if model does not equal main, break. And that's what we're doing that with the with open model.txt as f model equals f.read, which is awesome. This print thing is wrong, actually. This shouldn't be like that. Let me fix that. Oh, I'm not going to mess with it too, too much because, um, yeah, just, just like that. Okay, and so here's how I did it. This is my naive one, and basically I just, you know, went through the range of the numbers and got all the numbers and did a max um, I got the max of whatever the product of all the numbers was and so um, this was really cool but it had a lot of problems as you can expect so one of the biggest problems was in this naive one was that it would always get the the greatest number and like it would multiply it times itself and that would create the output so that was kind of an issue along the way. Now, for our map, for our, my algorithm, what I did was I then so to do it more quickly than having to go through all this range and do all of them. Instead, we just do the right one the first time. And how do you do that? Well, if you know from the list, you're gonna have two numbers that are the greater, and you want to multiply them. If you put the list in order, and then you multiply the ones at the end of the list, you then have the the maximum pairwise product, which is awesome. So that's what I ended up doing with this. And all I did here was I got the numbers and I sorted them and put it into a different variable. So I have um, sorted L equals sorted numbers. And then I returned the multiplication of indexing from the end of negative one, which is the last one, and then negative two, which is the second to last one. And that is how I solved this. And once I submitted this, I realized that it's extremely fast. It's actually one of the fastest ways to do this. There's even faster ways that I just don't know how to do, but I found out that there is. And so, yeah, that was basically what I learned this week. It's kind of a kind of a lot of stuff I didn't learn because I didn't do computer science in school. But hey, you don't need to do computer science in school to learn computer science. That's what we've done so far, though. And I'm super excited about this course. I wasn't sure if this is the course for me because it kind of deviates from data science a little bit, but if I'm gonna do any type of data engineering, machine learning engineering, serving any models to people, I need to you know, write the quickest code possible. This is gonna be awesome to just, to just know. It's kind of like what I missed by not taking computer science. Well, I missed a lot of these sorting algorithms and a lot of these ways of thinking in complexity and in time and in memory management that I'm gonna learn now through this course. I'm super excited. And yep, that's kind of it for this. And I just wanted to say that there was an update on my TensorFlow certification. So I haven't been able to take that test yet, but it's coming up. So as you guys may have heard before, I had a problem with my monitor because it broke right when I was gonna take the test the day before actually, and I wasn't able to take it on any other computer. But now I managed to get enough money together to get a new monitor, which is super exciting, came in this week. So I'm planning to then review again. I wanna review, I wanna be fresh, I wanna be quick for the exam. Once I review the the material, I hope to take it this week or not, or maybe next week. Now I know it's been, you know, I've been dragging it on forever, but it's just been an unfortunate series of events of just being busy and monitor breaking and, and TensorFlow. The way the exam works, I mentioned this before, only works on a certain computer of mine, so got to do what you got to do you know just go for it and so yeah i'm excited for that and i'll let you know how that goes all right see you